Lucky fours here. Min rays from under the gun. <laughs> Love those min rays from under the gun. Uh, NL50 again. This guy is deep stacked, uh, as are we. At close to 200 big blinds. And we don't like that at all, so we raise the. Uh, this is a two bet min raise. Okay, open raiser from under the gun. We then three bet to isolate him. Right, just under four times his raise. And I mean, essentially, that's just a pot size bet. Um, so we get fold, fold, fold. And as you see here, exactly two to one for pot size odds. So he needs 33% equity to make this call. If he's to go all in, of course he's not. So he needs 33% chance of hitting a playable flop where he can play on from there out of position. So we raise here fours, guys. You see that, right? It's under, gun, under the gun min raiser. And we raise it up with fours. So we're going to be doing that with aces, kings, everything else. And we're changing up our play. Um, we're not only playing monster hands, but you know, hands like this often in position. Right, small mid pairs, suited connectors. Be aggressive with those as well. Otherwise, you're too readable. So we get cold called. All right, okay. Uh, he calls our three bet flat, say, to keep it correct concerning the terminology. And we whiff completely. Um, three small mid cards, uh, unconnected and non-suited and eight uh, eight bucks in here, so sixteen big blinds in and both of us are really really deep and let's see, he checks it so we have the initiative, right? we three bet pre-flop and we decide to just check behind on that flop what's his check raise, why did I do that? so he's check raising only three percent of flops here um, so I Anyways, I opt for a delayed continuation bet. And, yeah, you don't always have to make your C-bets. Also change that up. All right, so now the king hits, and he makes this funky little weak uh, quarter pot bet. All right, representing maybe the king or maybe a flop set of some kind um, and wanting to kind of build the pot up here. And I say, no, thank you, actually. I'm holding the king. <laughs> and I raise him up. And he then calls. All right, so that's a pretty gutsy move. Um, but the fact is, he didn't come over the top. He only called it. So again, that could be flop sets. Um, could be a flush draw, kind of backdoor situation. Um, yeah, could be quite a few different things, but it could also be... An, really strong hand for that min raise call scenario if he's playing that kind of a funky line with aces kings or queens um, so anyways yeah he makes that funky small bet donks into me say on the turn and I raise it up so I keep the initiative and now he checks and so what do we do in position with this kind of board after having raised the turn represented the king and now he checks to us we, of course, bet. Because it's highly unlikely we're going to take this pot down with fours. <laughs> yeah, and we've kept the initiative on the turn. We raise his little funky bet, and then he checks into us again. But, which leads me to believe, you know, um, that he may have actually been on a flush draw of some kind. Um, maybe tens or jacks, who knows. And, yeah, we make a half pot bet, and we need to take that down 33% of the time. So we need him to fold one time in three, which he will. And he does. All right, so we take it down with fours with uh, aggressive post-flop post -flop play in position. So the next two hands we'll look at are six max examples. And we've got here king-queen offsuit on the button. It's folded around to us. And we make a standard steel raise three and a half big blinds, just repeating myself over and over again to really beat that one in. And we get cold called. So he just calls our two bet, our steel bet, and big blind folds. Flop comes, and this guy, <laughs> as you see here, the fish, already got the icon already at 25, uh, 25 hands. Um, he min bets into a pot of... Uh, eight big blinds. So that is theoretically a donk bet. <laughs> and that means that he's betting into me when I actually have 
the initiative to make my, my C bet if he does check. So he makes a so-called donk bet, so he doesn't give me the opportunity to make a C bet. Um, donks into me for the minimum. And here, we just want to be funky, because the guy is a fish, and so we... <laughs> oh, no, okay, so we just played... Uh, I'll play this guy. Okay, we represent the ace. Um, and, yeah, raise it up on this non-suited ace board, and he calls us. So the five comes. All right, pot's now 950, and he's got 25 left. And this time, our fish checks, and we double up. So, this time again, half pot bet, and we're hoping that we'll be able to take it down one time in three right now. Just representing the ace, because uh, there's, you know, we're unimproved here. The queen king's maybe not good enough. And he then lets it go, and we take it down. I think it's the next hand where we actually get cute. So ace queen on the button again, make a steel raise, three and a half big blinds, small blind calls us, flop comes, uh, two suited king high board that completely misses us. So non-connected but is two suited. And play continues with another min bet into that. And this time I think we do just, yeah, we decide to float his min bets. <laughs> Uh, and then he min bets us again on the turn, and of course, yeah, we can't have that. And bet into him, and now the river comes for a really huge scare card. Now, with this min bet call crap on the turn, you know, uh, against these kind of fishy players, 67% V pip, you can never really know. But the good thing about this board is all you need is a 5 to have the straight, right? And all you need is, uh, okay course the flush um, here did complete so you can represent either the flush or the the straight uh, if he checks again and if he doesn't have it of course uh, he'll let it go fish won't be re-raising bluffing you on on the river very often it's a very advanced move and that happens yeah, often at uh, with good players I mean you're gonna see it already at NL 100 but uh, right, maybe NL 50 but not anything below more than likely uh, against this guy I mean I think a one-third pot bet is gonna do the trick there you go. The next few hands that we'll look at have to do with um, bigger plays post flop. Uh, when you do flop big, uh, big hands. So here we are in a 100 again, uh, big stacked. The table has a few big stackers and a few small stackers, or say mid or hybrid st uh, stackers. And we again with fours late make our steel raise to three and get cold called twice and we flop mid set there and that's of course super super strong this guy donks out into us uh, thinking that we'll have misses flop a lot which we will um, but by raising with fours and sevens and twos uh, as well as five sixes pseudo connectors you'll also hit these kind of flops so that makes you very very hard to put on a range and this guy of course assumed that we missed we didn't we actually flop uh, just hit that flop super hard. Can't actually flop much better than that. Uh, but we are worried about the two-suited here um, scenario, and yeah, we decide just for a a raise of um, yeah, we basically pot it here. So um, this guy then folds it down, given our initial raiser pot odds of three to one, and that's you know just under what he needs for. Uh, the flush draw, but let's say that he were to call it, he actually folds here, let's say you were to call it um, and the diamond hits and he checks. We can check behind, right, hoping that the board then pairs after the fact. He bets into us, we take it down, come over the top with a full house. He checks on a turn that has no diamond, we can bet heavy into the pot to push him off that flush draw at that point. So, again, playing in position, you have all the different options open to you for pot manipulation. Um, we go ahead and raise this up here on the on the flop, pot size, and he lets it go. Both deep stacks. So, the deeper you are, the more danger is involved. The higher the risk, the higher the payoff. So, ten queen offsuit on the button. You don't have to steal with good hands, guys. Uh, this guy's letting it go 6% of the time here in the small, and this guy already uh, 70 in the big blind. Now raise it to 3 for a steel size. Get re-raised. 
and call cold with odds of 2.3 to 1. In position, and this guy's only getting downtown 16% of the time, went to showdown again, and I flop two pair on a highly connected uh, two-suited board with an ace. So quite dangerous even with my two pair, and I bet it out three-quarters pot. And he calls it flat. So when you get called flat, especially in steel scenarios, on an ace-high board that is two-suited like that, and you flop such a hard, or such a big hand, when that flush doesn't complete here, potentially, with the third heart, it's time to get super, super aggressive. Right, you want to definitely knock him off any any draw that could be beating your two-pair at this point. And hopefully get paid off if he's just on the bare ace X hand. So, he checks it to us, and we go ahead and make a hefty three-fourths, even over three-fourths pot size bet. Um, and he's nowhere near that if he is on the flush draw. And so, I think he lets it go here, didn't he? Yeah, and we take it down. Again, steel scenario, keeping your aggression up post-flop. Pair twos, uh, deep stacked here at 168 big blinds, and raising that up to three for a steal, also with twos, guys. Uh, okay, and we flop the set, so no set, no bet. With the set, definitely bet. He bets it, we raise it, he calls it. And now, again, we have the same scenario where, that was a bit too fast, we check raise him. Right, so he bets in position, just over just over half pot, and we check raise him on that board. Okay, and he's getting now odds of 3.38 to 1. Right, he needs 23% to finish that flush, and again, he's only going to have 19%. Um, you know, best case scenario, he's holding here something like uh, 10 queen or 10 8 suited spades, and then he's going to have a lot of equity. Right, he's going to have the full 15 ounce, um, and yeah, that'll make him actually quite strong coming into that. And that, with those odds, I mean, with 30% 30, 30 plus, he would be able to make that call uh, just based, based on pot odds alone. Anyway, so he calls us, and the idea again is when you have that set on a two suited board, and now even a, a third card to that connected run here hits the turn, now it's the time <laughs> not to be slow playing. All right, so slow play, non connected, non suited boards. Um, we check raise that flop with our set, and now we just bet into this strong because we want to go ahead and take it down now, and or get paid off on our set. So again, um, even if even if he let's say in this case he's playing, um, no, actually okay, the, if he were playing ten eight he would have completed. Um, if he were playing ten queen he would have just hit top pair, which might pay us off. Who knows? Um, ten king is now. Uh, made and with 10 king on this board he should push all in over the top to protect against exactly our hand the set he didn't want to see a paired board on the river and he also didn't want to see that third spade so let's say hypothetically he had the 10 king uh, got lucky on his inside straight draw uh, this is now time to push all in over the top and that's a very difficult call for your set here at that point um, so just different hypothetical lines. Uh, again, don't slow play with your sets on suited connected boards.